because as Chris Mara talked about last time, um, we want to be able to teach our children to learn to be independent. Yeah. She was talking with her children about this, and so last week she told us a little story about that. And I'm going to start talking about that after we pray, or I'm going to pray especially for myself, but um, just uh, let's open in prayer. Father God, we just come to you today. We thank you for this opportunity to gather together. We pray, Lord, that you will bless our homes. You will bless our uh, families as we do what we need to do to either lead our children or be uh, good um, grandparents or uh, spouses. Lord, that's what GEMS is all about, to just help us in our homes and our families. We pray, Lord, that you will, I just ask, Lord, you'll be with me today and that you will calm my heart and help my words to be clear. We just thank, thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So last time, as Chris Mara was telling us, she had been having a chat with her children about learning to be independent, and she gave the illustration about a mama bird having hatchlings in the nest. The mamas, or even the dads, bring food at first, and they may even chew up the food and regurgitate it back uh, so that the little ones can eat them because they're too little to digest food, and then as they grow, they may... Um, start to make the babies work harder to get the food and eventually they're giving the babies whole pieces and the babies fight over them and squabble and they've learned and they've accomplished the whole thing of eating and they've grown and then it's time for them to learn to fly and some of them will hop out on the limb and flap their wings and toddle back and forth just like our little sure. toddlers do but they like to stay close to the nest. And then some of them fall out on, on to the ground, out of the nest, and the parents start doing the training on the ground, the, the parent birds. Some of those babies never go back to the nest. Human parents may not do the same thing as a bird. However, we are supposed to train our children and raise them to become functional, independent, useful people that will serve the Lord in the way that he calls them to live. We, unfortunately, live in a world today where most young children, or, yeah, most young children know how to operate cell phones, play video games, and find Netflix on the smart TV. Many are good at playing sports or playing an instrument. They may attend practice and concerts, and the family is often consumed with extracurricular activities. But so many children nowadays and adults have no real skill sets for surviving and doing <laughs> real life. I read an article recently that was from a man over in England and he was talking about many children and adults are digital age geniuses, but if you ask them to pump up a tire or boil an egg, you might as well have asked them to go to the moon. They simply have no idea. Basic life skills are on the endangered list, with fewer young adults being able to perform simple tasks like sorting their own laundry or ironing a shirt. It is a disturbing trend. Many young people, people are incapable when it comes to essential housekeeping duties. One woman was very surprised when she asked her 16-year-old son to write a handwritten thank you note and mail it. She learned he did not know how. Not only had he never addressed an envelope, he had no clue where to place the stamp. 16 years old. <laughs> he had only used email, text messages, or other social forms of media when thanking people. Now, I would say that I blame the parents for this, but this is part of the problem. Parents are not parenting. This alarming lack of knowledge is, when it comes to performing menial tasks, is a major problem for business owners who struggle finding competent employees and apprentices. You can have these smart, educated children turning up from work 
showing up for work, but they have absolutely no practical life skills. There are 10-year-olds who still have their parents lay out their clothes and squeeze the toothpaste on their brush every morning. This causes children not to be able to cope in the real world. Our children can build magnificent worlds on Minecraft, but have no idea how to use a screwdriver, run a lawnmower, fix a flat tire, or make a proper bed. They're being growing up to become with no knowledge of traditional skills and how to become an adult. One woman openly admitted to making her daughter a freshly squeezed glass of orange juice every morning. And when her teenager hops into the shower, her mother makes her bed, places out a clean school uniform, and has a toasted cheese sandwich waiting for her to walk to the bus. Kids are, and young adults, are dependent for much longer. We're hearing over and over and over again of young people living in their families' basements, yep. sometimes at 30 years old. Yep. Just the other day, I saw a story about a 20-something young woman living in her parents' basement. Her mother told her she needed to move out. She gave her six weeks to find a place to live. The mother was tired of her living rent-free and doing nothing. But there are so many households where children have been raised to do nothing and not do the cleaning, not help with the cooking, because the parents do it all for them. We need to be focusing on self-reliance. Practical life skills are vital when it comes to surviving and thriving in society. Now, I understand for many parents, they are overwhelmed with all the responsibilities. Parents have two working families. They um, oftentimes choose not to delegate household chores in the home to others because it's quicker and faster to do it ourselves. Some moms believe it is their job to do it all for their child to pick up after them, clean the house, and clean the child's room, and to cook everything, and to cater to all their needs and wishes. Did God really design the family to be like that? What is the purpose of the family? If you find that it's too hard to teach your children or to have them help you, because um, it's a, it makes it a bigger chore, I often think we have to ask ourselves, why did we want children in the first place? We wanted children to raise them up, right? So why are we complaining or why are we saying it's just too much to teach them how to do things? Do we quickly use our, lose our patience when they don't do it right? Do we tell them, never mind, that we'll take over the job and do it ourselves? What did we think parenting was going to be like? What is a parent to be doing? I looked up the definition, um, this is just one, um, there's many, but a definition of parenting came, parenting your child rearing promotes and supports the physical, emotional, social, intellectual development of a child from infancy into adulthood. Parenting refers to the intricacies of raising a child and not exclusively for a bio, as a biological relationship. Good parenting involves a great deal of consistency and routine, which gives the child a sense of control. Good parents, good parenting focuses on developing, and this is our word, independence in children. So redundancy becomes the aim for the parents. Good parenting involves a style that considers the child's age and the stage of developing. But parenting, ladies, is work. <laughs> we all know that. But a lot of times we want to make it easier on ourselves by taking it over and just doing it ourselves. Parenting is hard work. And as Christian, that includes raising up the generations to give glory to God and serve Him. 
Should God expect us to train our children to be adults capable of flying from the nest and living well, independent from the parents? Proverbs 1 8 says, My son, hear the instruction of thy father and forsake not the law of, the mother, of thy mother. To do that, we as parents need to be active and involved with our children and the main teachers of our children. Going back to that 20-something girl who was living in her mother's basement, when her mother told her that her time was up because the girl had not tried to move out, she screamed and she cried. The girl, I saw a picture of her, had blue-green hair, many piercings, claimed to be transgendered, claimed to be schizophrenic, and a few other things that she said would cost her not to be able to get a job and move out. She felt she had too many problems and could not afford to pay her mother rent. She or her mom said she did not care. Her mom said she was done promoting, having her promote her lifestyle, not help in the home, not and when she had money for her hair dyeing and hair scenes, but she didn't have money to help at home or even make any effort. I asked, how did this mother let it get this way? Did she not see as the child was coming up? Was the mother not doing things when she was young to help her learn how to function? I have to place the blame on the family, the parents. Um, it would seem that she, where were both parents? And it would seem that the parents let her learn either from the school or from her friends or from the social media or the television, but they probably were not active in training her. I really don't know because the story did not go into that. But we need to recognize as parents, grandparents, aunts, and even siblings, that we have a responsibility to be raising up the next generation to be godly, capable, and independent adults. And it's going to be taking, rolling up our sleeves, and getting to work. I remember in my own home as a young child doing work at home. I was so little that I had to stand on a chair to wash the dishes. My mother was usually in the kitchen with me, as well as the rest of the family members, all doing chores to get the food put away and the kitchen cleaned up. We all cleaned off the table. We all had a job. Somebody's job was to wipe the counters and the table, sweep the floor, so that when we left the kitchen, the job was done. My parents taught us what to do and how to do it. We did most things together with our parents, like my father teaching us how to mow the lawn. We gathered sticks so that they didn't get run over by the lawnmower and damage the lawnmower. We washed the cards together. We folded clothes together. No one went off to play on a device or um, go off to do their own thing or watch a movie while our parents did all the work. So for children today, I'm suggesting that we get back to the way it used to be. Yep. It's character building. It teaches survival and helps parents to bond with their children. Before I was married, I taught preschool handicap for Crossroads Rehabilitation Center. My philosophy was to teach each student to be as independent as possible, no matter what their handicapping condition. I would require every student to complete every task that we were teaching, no matter what their limitations were. Many parents would come into our classroom or look for, we had two-way mirrors, and they would come in and they would be in the little uh, section where they could watch in the classroom and see what was going on. And after class, they would often come up to me and say, how did you get my child to do that? <laughs> and I said, well, Part of it was because of our constant repetition. If they wouldn't do it the first time or couldn't do it the first time, it was reintroduced over and over and over. We had some children who were very tactile and defensive and couldn't touch things like shaving cream. And we would just keep working at it and working at it until one day they might just 
jump in and you know and get it all over them. But I expected them to try. I expected them to make the effort, even if I was making the effort with them to put their little fingers in there or to touch the things they didn't want to or to pick up a toy. Many of my, my parents had no expectations because of their child had a handicap. Many times, over and over, I explained that if they did not want the child to, to be, if they want, did not the child to be able to do anything as they grew and became an adult, just don't expect it. But if they wanted them to be able to function, and if they wanted them to be able to have some skills, they had to push them to the goal. It's the same way with our young ones. If we want them to be capable adults, we have to start when? When do we start? My answer is we start when they're born. We start right after they come out of the womb. And don't worry if you miss that boat because you just start where you are. My children were taught to make their beds when they were moving and walking and able to stand while they were in the crib. My mother-in-law thought that I was just a big old meanie and I was too tough on them. And that was my job. So I asked her one day after we had another discussion about this, I said, so at what age do we start teaching them to make their own beds? And she really didn't have an answer. She said, well, when they're capable of doing it. I said, well, Lauren is capable of pulling up her blankets. She's capable of putting her little stuffies in the corner. She's capable of putting her pillow down. And when she looks at her little crib still standing in it, and messing it up at the same time. She's all proud and she says, look, mama, I made my bed. And I said, yay, and we were proud. And so every day she wanted to make her bed better. Now, maybe 10 minutes later, she's back in there pulling those blankets back out or getting that little lovey back out. But she was proud that she was able to make that bed. I didn't go in there and say, oh no, we can't touch it. You know, you made it, it looks perfect now, so we need to leave it. That's where we have to let our expectations, our, our perfectionism go. You know, we need to let them do things and we need to be able to let them recognize that they are capable. How about this? Think about this. A young child is able to be playing on the floor with another child, and they're able to grab a toy from someone else and claim it and say, mine. And they can know that that child is theirs, or that toy is theirs, they can also know that they have to take care of it, and they can put it away. If they're able to get a toy out, why can't they put it back? Okay, this goes with the same with their beds, their toys, their blankets. And it's not going to happen automatically. And most babies are not aware to put things away until you tell them to. If you are done with this, let's put it back in the box before we get out something else. This is the start of teaching that child that you can't see right now to be an independent adult. This is the start at the very beginning. <clears throat> There are so many things children can do if the parent will take the time and accept it as not being perfect. Little things like putting the silver away, help emptying the dishwasher, throwing the trash away, putting socks together and in the right drawers. I know it takes your time and attention, but that is really what your job is, training the gifts that God gave you. It's only for a season, Mom. As some of us here can very well tell you, you won't be doing it forever, and you'll be missing the days when those socks weren't all over the place. If you teach now, they will learn those valuable skills, and you will be building up the, them up for bigger, greater, and more responsibilities, all which build all build on themselves to help them grow into young adults. Taking care of things at home, all the things that it takes to run a home, is training. You have your children work alongside of you. You do not pay them for taking care of these things. It's part of living in the home and being a part of your family. Do not 
pay, this is my personal opinion, do not pay allowances unless somebody is paying you to clean your own bathroom. I believe that children can and should learn to do extra work to earn money. And you can write out little contracts and you can do little things and say, okay, this is extra, this isn't our normal thing, but if you do this, this is how, what I would pay you. And especially that teaches them other things like saving, budgeting, um, planning, those kinds of things. When my children were young, um, we had them do everything. And we did not, because we had one boy and one girl, we did not divide up boy jobs and girl jobs. Lauren took out the trash, Lauren cut wood, Evan baked, Evan um, uh, did laundry. We Everybody did every job. They were all taught to do different jobs. Um, for that, you know, my children and their spouses are very grateful. Evan is now the stay-at-home dad, and his wife is the one who goes to work, and he, she comes home to fabulous meals. My son's been teaching me all about how to use my Instapot because he sends me recipes all the time of saying, oh, I just made this fabulous chicken cacciatore, you need to try this. He's making homemade baby food. Um, he he does uh, everything for his daughter. He's, he's just he cracks me up. I mean, I just I'm amazed, and I'm also very proud of him. But if he has to go out and uh, do work on the car, he can also do those kinds of things. I remember um, several years ago when the men here were having the. Uh, a work session with the youth group and they were supposed to go they went they were going someplace and they went out to change a tire on a car and um, this was supposed to be a lesson for the young men and Evan already knew how to do it so he just was kind of standing back and watching and even the dad <laughs> had to come and ask Evan for help on what to do because he couldn't figure it out so it's just it's just one of those things that if you really do just think what is it going to take for them to survive in this world so we had i used to make charts and i would make blessing this is the bathroom blessing checklist which i found in my cupboard and it was just the first thing was a total clean and then the bottom one was the daily cleanup and so i wrote out everything i expected my kids to do now, did I just say, here's the checklist, go do it? No. When they were little and younger, I took them in there and I showed them. And we worked together until they learned how to clean a bathroom. And I said, now that you've got this, I expect you to check this list. We also, I kept a little chart so they could check off what they did. They came in and said, I'm finished. We went in and inspected it together to make sure it all got done. And then if it did, they were free to go. If it didn't, then they had to go back and fix it. There are lots of charts out there that tell you things, life skills. I was going to make copies, but my printer was being very bad and would not help me along here. There's life skills for kids. There's practical things that children can do, like at the ages, you know, divided up into ages. So if you're not sure, um, Look those kinds of things up, or just even say, I'm just going to have my child alongside of me. We, uh, my grandchildren were here recently, and my granddaughter was right there with my husband, and he's doing work, and she, he gives her a wrench, and he lets her pretend that she's doing stuff, so that she can learn how to do it. Yeah, um, there's a whole list of 40 old-fashioned skills that children need to know, like writing a letter or balancing a checkbook. Even though we don't use, a lot of people don't use a checkbook, how to do a ledger, how to balance, how to keep track of your money is important. Um, all of those kinds of things need to be taught to our kids. And we can't expect the schools to teach them everything. So, along with that, when we're trying to train our children in practical, practical skills, we need to train them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. While we are teaching them to be independent in their lives, eventually being able to go out, we want them to be dependent on God.
because apart from God, we are nothing. Christian parents are attempting to provide their children with a tangible example of what God's love is for them. When people are truly loved and cared for by their parents, they get a small glimpse of what God's love for us looks like. Studying and learning how to live a Christian life that is dependent on God for all things. God's word tells us that we need to train of a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. We want our children to be faithful to God. We want our children to live in peace. And Isaiah 54, 13 says, And all thy children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of thy children. We want our children to have the example being set by us and learning with us. And it says, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and do not forsake the law of thy mother. Do our children see us studying God's word? Do we have family time of learning about God? Do they hear us and see us pray? Do we have them pray for the family and for others? Sometimes we're not real successful at this because we don't have our priorities straight. We want them to be successful in school and in music and in sports, and we put God and Christian training at the bottom of the list. Does baseball practice come before Bible time? Do we need to set uh, um, we need to set God above all in our lives before school, before church activities, friends, phones, computers? Sports, yes. God needs to be first. When you're running late, even when you're running late, pray with them. Pray in the car. Ask them to pray for things. Let them lead Bible time and let them lead prayer time. God tells us that our children are a heritage and the fruit of our womb. And three, third, three John, third, third John says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. And to bring them up in that nurturing admiration of the Lord. God also tells us to correct our son and he will give you rest. The first thing you need to be able to do to carry out this duty is to know that you are saved. And that you are a child of God. And that Jesus Christ is your Savior and your Redeemer. You need to know who Jesus is and why he came. And that he lived a sinless life and died to pay the penalty of your sins. You need to accept this free gift of salvation yourself. If you have never accepted Christ as your Savior, please, please feel free to talk to one of us. We would be honored to show you what to do to become a member of God's family. And then you can teach your children. While we grow our children to become independent, we pray that they will become more and more dependent on God and learn to walk in that dependence and trust in faith. It is a daily walk of renewing of the mind, as Romans 12, 2 says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This is what our children must see in us. In all of our situations, we need to be completely dependent on God. When the car won't start, when the computer won't work for me last night and this morning, we need to live by God's word and teach them what God tells us, how we can trust him and we can lean on him for all of our life's battles. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. Isaiah 41, 13. In their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. We need to be giving them these verses. We need to be filling them up with these things. Keep me safe, my God, for in you I take my refuge. That's where we need to be. We need to say, God will fight for you. You only need to be still. We need to let our children see and feel and grasp who God is and how great he is. And if we're not setting that example, if we're not telling them, if we're not writing it on the doorposts of our home, as the Bible says, then they're not going to see that. They're not going to gather that and they're not going to understand. So how can we do that? 
We need to rejoice in his miracle and the works that he does in our lives. So just real quick, first, make sure to rescue yourself. Make sure that you have a living relationship, starting with salvation with the Lord. Then teach them all things that God must be the foundation of their life. Psalm 127.1 says, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain. Life without God is senseless and useless. Jehovah is the only God, the true God, that you may know that I, the Lord, which call thee by name, am the Lord God of Israel. Independence must work within the framework of God's standards and his design for how he wants us to live. So to do that, we have to teach them what God's word says, and that is a daily thing. And our children look to us for the example, and we are responsible how we influence others. We must show and live dependence on God, reading his word and prayer. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. We need to be showing them that they can come boldly to the throne of grace, that they may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So mamas, let me encourage you. Let me encourage you to push your children so that someday they will be prepared to fly out of the nest. <laughs> if there's children who can do things, I see in the future that if they can be independent and work independently and have their own know how to do stuff, they're going to do great things in the world because there's so many children who can just going to be living in their parents' basements, unfortunately. So if you teach them and you really push them and you teach them what all of these life skills that they need to take care of themselves and perhaps their own family someday, that is fantastic. But as you do, do not neglect the most important teaching of all is to teach them to rely on and cry out to God in total faith and dependence on Him so that they can have the independence in the world, but the dependence on God. Thank you. Amen.